Hey guys, Joe back at it once again with some A-level further maths topics and today we are talking about summation results. So, uh, in the last episode we obviously did a bit of induction. It's a while since I've actually recorded one of these lessons because I have been a little bit busy recently so if I'm a little bit rusty that is why. So, uh, the learning objective for today is to understand how to use standard results to simplify expressions. Now, uh, they're not the sort of expressions you would um, really be thinking about when when you say expressions but here we go uh, there's a few standard results that we have to be aware of uh, when it comes to series uh, they are used to vastly reduce the time we take to sum up a load of numbers so this is where we're going to see sigma get involved again uh, they are also true for every single number and all we need to know is the number where we want to stop on so it's very similar to induction but obviously we prove these results by induction um, but this is it's just a little extension of that uh, one of these standards result standard results is the sum of the first n natural numbers and you might have uh, might remember from a co couple of lessons ago when we started induction that that is what we proved that uh, the sum between one and any stopping point of the natural numbers equals a half of n times n plus one uh, there you go, you may remember we proved this by induction a couple of lessons ago. So if we wanted to carry out the sum up to 5, we could do 1 plus, 3, uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, which is 15, or we could replace all the n's with 5's and get 5 times 6 halved, which is also 15, so we would have saved loads of time if n uh, was a large number like 100, because you wouldn't want to add every single number to 100, you would just do a half times 100 times 101. So two other standard results are the sum of the first n square numbers and the sum of the first n cube numbers. So it goes natural square cube. So uh, the sum of the numbers of r squared is a sixth of n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. And r cubed is that. And you could also prove those by induction. So if you want a couple of examples, uh, try those and you should be able to do it. Uh, funnily enough, I have tried to look for r to the 4, but I'm not sure it works. Uh, me and a friend, we actually tried a load of different methods like uh, squaring this one because the relationship between this and this is a square. Uh, so we thought maybe r to the 4 is the square of r to the 2. but you know, we, we never got the answer and maybe when I go to study a degree it'll become clear but um, we digress and uh, you may also realize that the sum of the first n cube numbers is the square of the sum of the first n natural numbers so that's the kind of uh, link we were going for. So there you go, they're at the, the top and we can use these combinations to help us simplify tricky sum ups into more manageable ones with n's in. So we must follow a strict strict procedure and be confident with our algebra to succeed with it. So here's an example. Find a simplified expression for the sum of uh, 1 to n of r times r squared minus 12r. So the first thing we do with these is expand any bracket. So it's exactly the opposite of induction. Uh, induction we don't expand until we really, really need to. But with these, it expands straight away. So uh, we've got that and we expand it and we get that so r times r squared is r cubed r times minus 12r is minus 12r squared so now we've got the sigma uh, well the sum of um, all the numbers from 1 to n of r cubed minus 12r squared so step 2 we split the sigmas so uh, we stick the r cubed to 1 and the r squared to another because we want to try and weasel in these fellas upstairs um, because we know standard results for them. So what we do is we turn that into that. So we've got uh, the sum of the r cubed minus 12 lots of the sum of the r squared. And that is a move known as splitting the sigmas. So step three is apply your standard results. So we can replace the sum of the cube numbers and uh, the sum of the square numbers with our standard results. So there you go, uh, we can see that we've got the sum of the cube numbers and the sum of the square numbers. So we simply just replace it like that. 
and I would put them in brackets so you can uh, distinguish that your 12 is is there um, and not part of the the actual chain and then you take out any common factors so uh, the 12 and the 6 will cancel out to make 2 so uh, when you bring the quarter to the front uh, well I think I've actually just um, just cancelled the, the 12 and the 6 there so there you see the 2 comes out now common factor from there is a quarter but remember we'll have to put a dummy 8 in uh, here to make sure it pops out a 2 when we expand that again uh, the n is also a common factor and so is the n plus 1 so we we'll bring them out to the front and left behind are n n plus 1 minus 8 lots of n times 2 n plus 1 and then you expand inside the square brackets just like an induction like that and it would usually factorize but I don't think this one does uh, so we have a simplified expression in terms of n so if we know a stopping point we can work out the sum of all the numbers up to and including it so a recap we're going to simplify the expression of a series using standard summation results in five clear steps so first you expand any brackets then you split the sigmas then you apply the standard results take out common factors and expand inside the square brackets uh, but then you could be asked a follow-up question so evaluate uh, the sum from 21 to 30 of the thing we've just simplified so we know that the R part can be replaced with this so we simply just uh, but we can, remember remember if we go back all the way to here um, that is an R of, of 1 so we can only use a starting point of 1 but there's a problem because on this one there's a starting point of 21 so we're gonna have to be very very clever and use theories of number lines and stuff like that um, so we want the numbers from 21 to 30 and if you imagine that on a number line you've got 1, 2, 3 all the way up 21 uh, well I'll put 20, 21 and then all the way up to 30 and we just want this bit here so how we're going to do that well we want a starting point of 1 so I'm simply going to do the sum of the numbers from 1 to 30 and then subtract the sum of the numbers from 1 to 20 because if we do 1 to 30 we've got all of those and then we want to subtract all the way up to 20 so we are basically just erasing all of this and what we are left with is simply just 21 to 30 so that is the main thing that you want to pick up from today so we'll do the sum of, uh, from 1 to 30 and then subtract the sum of all the numbers from 1 to 20 and then we'll just be left with 21 to 30 so just think about a number line and it'll all fall into place from there so that equals putting in a 30 like that so we want a quarter of 30 times 31 times that and then minus putting a 20 in so quarter 20 21 that which is that and you can check that on a calculator I believe I did um, but if I'm wrong please you know tell us in the comments below but that is the theory of it and you, you can now tackle any summation question using the standard results so hopefully you guys have found this helpful uh, we're gonna move away from series now and we're gonna go more into uh, parabolas hyperbolas uh, and then some numerical methods after that so uh, hopefully you found it helpful make sure you do leave a like down below if you did because it, it lets us know that these lessons are helpful to you and make sure you leave any feedback in the uh, comments as well and I do reply to any questions that you do have so I hope you are having a wonderful day and your A-levels are going very very well and I'll see you for the next lesson on parabolas.